Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden and welcome to my March front garden tour. I am super excited to show you all everything that's going on this month because it's starting to really look gorgeous. All the spring bulbs are coming up, the daffodils, the tulips, the anemones, everything is looking fantastic. So every month on my channel, I do a front garden tour and a back garden tour just so that we can see the progress throughout the year. It's something that I started from the very beginning of my channel I do have a playlist called garden tours so you guys can see from the very beginning the progress that my garden has taken over the past year and a half about year and a half now at this point um, so if you guys have been watching my channel for a while you'll notice that this is not the normal format that we <laughs> that I normally film my garden tours usually I am behind the camera I talk for a little bit selfie style and then I am behind the camera Jason is here with me today and we are trying something a little bit different. He has the camera and he is going to be filming me. I'm just saying this because bear with us, we're getting the kinks worked out this month and we're trying to decide if we like filming our, the garden tours this way versus the old way that I like to do it, that I usually do it. So let me know in the comment section how you like it, which way you like it better. I would really appreciate your input. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first off, we are up here, obviously, <laughs> the obvious, the piece de resistance of my garden right now, and that is my daffodil border. This is what I call my front annual swoop, and I absolutely love it. I always save this garden bed for the most bang for your buck flowers. And normally during the summer season, I plant it up with summer annuals, and it's absolutely beautiful, but I like to reserve this for daffodils for the winter and early spring. This year, I tried something a little bit different. Normally, I just go for the yellow trumpet daffodils but this year I decided to do a blend from colorblends.com it's called spring loaded and the point of this blend is to make it so that it starts blooming early in the season and then it just keeps going and I feel like we're about midway to almost the end of this daffodil show and it's absolutely beautiful Jason come here and I'll show you there are a whole bunch of different kind of daffodils that are absolutely gorgeous. There's double ones like this. There's little tiny ones with multiple, uh, multiple blooms per stem. Ones like this, this is one of my favorites. This is the pure white one, and I think it's called Mount Hood. I think that's what a couple of you guys told me. Um, I just love this one. I just think it is absolutely beautiful. So as time goes on, there are different daffodils that kind of pop up. Some of them die. I have been deadheading these, uh, but I just, I've never had such a long show of daffodils as I've had with this spring loaded blend. Uh, so it's a mix from colorblends.com and I really, really enjoy it. So normally if you were to grow daffodils, I am in zone 9B. And if you're in zone 9B, daffodils will naturalize for us here. Um, we just have to leave the leaves up for about six to eight weeks. I am impatient and I don't like leaving the leaves up for that long because I want to get my summer annuals in, especially because I work with proven winners and I want to get those plants in as soon as possible so I can grow those to their full capacity as soon as possible in my garden. So I am not planning to leave these up and leave the leaves up to soak in the sun. But if you do want your daffodils to come back the next season, you can deadhead them, but then you just have to leave these green leaves up so that they can soak in that sun photosynthesize and store all that energy in the bulbs for next year then you can see in between my daffodils i do have this snow princess lobularia sweet alyssum uh, it is one of my favorite flowers it is from proven winners and it is just a workhorse in the garden here in zone 9b it lasts all winter long and it blooms all winter long it's absolutely gorgeous and i will be moving these i am not getting rid of these because they just last for so long if you let them grow they'll get about four feet wide. They're, they're incredible plants and they start in a four inch can. So it's a really big deal. Plants are not cheap these days. So I think it's really important to get the biggest bang for your buck plants. And Snow Princess Lobularia is definitely a big bang for your buck plant. Okay, so I'm just gonna come right over here 
There is something that has definitely changed in this spot in my garden, and that is my Coleonema Sunset Gold Breath of Heaven right here. I had one of them here, and I had one of them over there, and here in California, we have had so much rain this winter and spring. It's been absolutely crazy. Our normal rainfall is about 16 inches a year, and it's March, and we've already had 25, and we're supposed to get another inch tomorrow of rain so we are so inundated with rain which is great because we've been in a drought since 2020 we are no longer in a drought which is very exciting um, but a lot of the plants that I have in my garden are, are drought tolerant plants and so when you have a drought tolerant plant and then you get all that water and then you combine it with maybe not the best draining draining soil sometimes your plants don't survive and so that's what happened to my breath of heaven right here this this plant was kind of starting to die. This one over here by my rose arch, it just, it, it was like all of a sudden one day, Jason and I walked outside and we noticed it was spotty and brown and the whole thing was woody on the inside. So we just decided to bite the bullet and we decided to replace them. So I found these new ones at the garden center. They were in a five gallon pot. I just replaced them in a video. I think the video came out just, just earlier this week. So it's very tiny. It's going to be smaller, um, but I'm actually kind of happy about it because, oh, I have, I have pollen. Um, I'm actually kind of happy about it because after they bloom, they do get these tiny little pink blooms. Jason, can you see this? It's like the tiniest little bloom. It's just coming into bloom right now. They get these pink blooms all over the place. And after they're done blooming, you can prune this plant back. And what my plan is, is I'm gonna prune it back into a spherical shape. I'm gonna kind of keep it really nice and tight. And I think that it'll be super pretty. So the shrub that was here before that I replaced this shrub with, that was here when we moved into this house and it hadn't been pruned. So I was kind of limited for how much I could actually prune it so that is one good thing about starting with a new plant that if you are going to keep it shaped into a tight ball you can do it from the very beginning so I'm disappointed that I lost these plants but I also am happy because I feel like I can make it exactly how I want it all right, and then you can see over here, I do have my first foxglove bloom, which is so exciting. I love having foxgloves in my garden. This one was actually from last year. I like the Camelot mix foxgloves. Cam usually foxgloves are biennials and they will only bloom the second year. But with Camelot mix, I start them from seed and they actually will bloom the first year. I left this one in and so this one is starting to bloom again. That's why um, it's blooming so early. Usually it's around May when the foxgloves bloom for me. So I have a lot of foxglove plants, plants planted all around here. I did sow some new ones this year and I put them in. And so those are starting to grow up right now. And I feel like they're going to start blooming really, really soon. You can see I have tulips all over in this garden. These tulips that you're seeing are a mix from Longfield Gardens. I got the mixes from Costco in the Costco bags. Yes, I'm one of those people that go and I'm like reaching down to the back to find the good varieties. Um, I absolutely love having tulips in my garden, but because I am in zone 9B, I do have to pre-chill all of my tulips. And that's something that's really important if you live in a hot area. Uh, if you live in a hot area, you absolutely have to pre-chill your tulips because we just don't get cold enough during the winter. And bulbs like tulips need that, that chill period so that it can signal the bulb to start flowering. If you notice that your tulips or your bulbs are very short and maybe they don't even bloom at all, that's usually a sign that they, the bulbs didn't get cold enough and uh, they needed some pre-chill time. So I will always put them in my garage fridge. We don't have any fruits and vegetables in that garage fridge and it's just a really easy way uh, that I can pre-chill my bulbs and I can get beautiful tulips like this. All right, so speaking of tulips, let me show you guys my crepe myrtle garden bed. It is so incredibly beautiful right now. So again, I came out here in between rainstorms. I remember it was starting to sprinkle on me and I just planted like crazy. So you can see I have tulips popping up almost everywhere. Now, a couple of the big ones like this one right here and there's another one over there. These are called big love tulips and these are the ones that I planted 
planted actually last season. So these came up last season and surprisingly they did come back for me. Um, I cannot depend on tulips coming back for me each year. So it's always a really nice surprise when I find that tulips come back. Jason, come over here and get it this way because I feel like this angle is just the absolute most beautiful angle <laughs> that you can have. Um, I do have calla lilies up here. These two calla lilies have been in here for a couple years now, but just earlier, about a month ago, I put in three new ones and they are just, this is just the perfect spot for calla lilies. I love calla lilies. I have a whole bunch of them going in in my backyard um, that I'm growing from the rhizomes. And so I'm super excited about it, but I just think that they're the most beautiful plant and they just do really, really well for us. They're super happy here. So yeah. Yeah, so those are new and then right down here you can you can see I have an angel wing senecio and this is replacing my dusty miller I used to have dusty miller new look right here and I just I love this plant I got the idea from getting this plant I was watching Erin the impatient gardener and she had these in her garden and they were just so beautiful so when I saw them at the garden center it was just like I had to have them I, I think that they're so pretty I love having pops of that silvery white foliage color. I just think that it makes it so gorgeous. And then coming this way, I'll show you guys another one of my absolute favorite plants. This is called Common Heliotrope. It smells like lavender. It is such an amazing plant. You can see this one, this plant doesn't like the cold. So you can kind of see what happens when it gets a little too cold. It kind of scorches a little bit like that cold scorches. Um, but as the season gets hotter, we get really, really hot here during the summer. It's going to absolutely love its life right here. And I think that right as we walk past here, we'll get that whiff of vanilla and it will be absolutely amazing. Okay. Should we show them the hummingbird nest? Yeah. Okay, let's try not to scare her. So I had a hummingbird that kept coming in the garage and I didn't know what was going on and I was afraid that they were putting uh, their nest in the garage and I was really, really scared about it. And then finally I found the nest and it's right up here on my star jasmine. Oh, she's not in there. She's not in there. So here's the nest right here, right there. And you'll see, we'll, we'll come back here before we finish up, um, but you'll see that she will just sit there and she won't move. She will just stay frozen. I wonder if the babies are born. There looks like there's a lot of poop there. So I wonder if they're born already. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to bug them too much. I'm trying to give them their privacy, but I just absolutely love that they're there. Okay. So let's come along this way. This is my limelight hydrangea. It's starting to come out of dormancy, which is so exciting. It's not gonna bloom probably till June for us, but I always love to see it start to come out of dormancy. It's really, really exciting. And then I can know that I pruned it correctly. So super happy about that. And then coming up this way, another thing that I did this month is I have all these sweet peas growing right here. I planted all these sweet peas. These are all, um, I think they're, are they Elegance Watermelon? Oh, I don't remember. I'm blanking on it right now. But I ended up putting this chicken wire right here just so that they would have something to grow on. I think I'm just going to leave it just as this and not put another layer. I was thinking about doing another layer to come all the way up. But I think once they get to this point, I'm going to be able to wind them around the top of the fence. Um, and I think that that will be really, really pretty. Really pretty. All right, so coming this way. Over here, I have my Oklahoma red bud right here, and it is starting to bud out. This is a new plant. I put this plant in last November, or this tree, I should say, and it is starting to bud out, and it has this gorgeous reddish, pinkish, purple leaves or, or uh, blooms in the spring, and it just is going to be beautiful. Can you see the buds? Look at this one. Oh my goodness, I am just so excited. This is really exciting for me because this is a first year tree. Um, so I, it took me so long to decide what tree I wanted to put here. So I finally ended up on the Oklahoma Redbud. I think I made a great choice and I'm just really excited to see it this spring. 
And then right underneath it, you can see I have more tulips that look absolutely gorgeous. They are so beautiful. I just love it. And I think next year I'm going to do the same thing, but just double the amount that I did. I think this is a hundred right here. And I think it'll be amazing. I do also have ranunculus here and my ranunculus. This is my first ranunculus bud. My ranunculus have been so late this year. Same with my friend who also grows ranunculus. She's just starting to be see buds right now. And this is late this is we've had a very cold and very wet winter um, so it's just really interesting to see how plants respond to that so my first ranunculus bud and i'm very excited about it all right coming up this way let's go into my gated garden bed so in my gated garden bed more tulips of course in these i have a blend called double pink double pink tulips and they are starting to come. You can kind of see how the shade is right here. This is a north facing part of my home. Uh, so it does get a little bit more shade, which is why I think that a lot of these are kind of, um, kind of behind some of the other tulips, but you can see back here. I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. It is just so incredibly beautiful. I love it. This makes it all worth it. You know, I was out here in the rain. I remember being in the rain, planting these bulbs, and I'm so glad I did it. It was absolutely so worth it. Okay, coming over here, here's a trio of pots that I just potted up. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So, my first day of spring present to myself <laughs> was this boxwood spiral. I absolutely love it. I've never owned a boxwood spiral before. I have a juniper spiral, but I never actually, you know, boxwood spirals are not cheap. And so <laughs> I never actually owned a boxwood spiral. So when I saw it at the garden center, I, I just, you know, I kept coming back to it and kept, you know, oh no, I'm not going to get it. Not, and then I kept coming back to it and finally it was like, okay, I'm going to get it. I'm definitely going to get it. And I'm glad I did because I think it's going to last for years and I think this is the perfect place for it. So that's mixed in with some pansies, um, with some helichrysum. I do have some hydrangeas right here. I don't know if these hydrangeas are going to love it here. Uh, we're a little hot for these macrophylla hydrangeas, but I do have another macrophylla hydrangea behind me and that one does pretty well there. I do have some columbine, some kirigami red and white columbine. Uh, yeah, and then some stock right there. So I'm loving this trio of pots. It's my first real like spring planting right now and I think that it's gorgeous. All right, one of the fun things that I did this month is I did redo my front porch area. So I had kind of neglected it after the holidays and I'm excited to get it all nice and cleaned up for the whole season. And I have to say, I love it. I love how it looks. I got a new bench, new rug. This is probably one of my favorite things in my garden right now. Um, this is a wreath. I wish I could claim that I made this. I did not make this. I actually purchased it from Etsy. I will link it down below. It is absolutely beautiful. It does shed, right? I mean, it is a dried flower wreath. It is so pretty. Sometimes I'll find gomfrina on the floor and that's fine. I'm totally okay with it because I think it is just so, so very pretty. One thing that I did make myself is I did make these moss letters. This was kind of a DIY dupe for Pottery Barn. I don't know if you guys have seen the Pottery Barn moss letters. I absolutely love them, but they are not cheap. And I, I always look at them and think, I can do that. <laughs> so I did. And I think that they turned out really, really pretty. JJSS, if you're wondering, is Janie, Jason, Sadie, and Shay. So it's my family. Um, that's, you know, it's just kind of something special that we always like mark everything with JJSS, which is really fun. Then here in the shade, I do have this container that I put together. And the main plant in this container is this hellebore right here. It is absolutely beautiful. This is a shade lover. I actually got this with my grandmother. We went and visited Filoli Gardens. Um, that is in Woodside about, I don't know, 30 minutes south of San Francisco. It is one of the most beautiful gardens I had ever been to. And they were selling plants that they had in the gardens. And one of them was this hellebore. And it's so incredibly beautiful. I have Saxifraga. 
under here. Um, this one likes a little bit more sun, so I don't think this one is going to survive uh, for very long, but for right now, I like it. I can already tell that the pink has kind of faded to a white because it's sitting here in the shade. And then I have this Ogon grass right here. Ogon grass does like shade, so it's a good one to put here. And then I do have the Lamium, and I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It makes me super happy every time I walk up to the front door. All right, let's keep going. All right, and then coming over this way, we're still in the gated garden bed area, and this is my Ivy Espalier. And I love this thing, I love it so much. It takes so much work, but I don't care. It is totally worth it. I just have it on my gardening schedule. Every Saturday I come out here and I just run my hands behind it just to make sure that the Ivy isn't attaching to the siding. I do have wire strung up here um, with eye hooks, and that is how I espalier everything that I have that I have espaliered in my property um, and so I just have to come up here and just to maintain it I just kind of go like that and it works really well and I think if you stay on top of it it makes it very easy I can get it done in five minutes so five minutes every week and I have this beautiful ivy espalier that I love right below it I have this pulmonaria this is a shade lover it has these really cool leaves with these light green spots on it but the really cool thing about this plant is this time of year it starts blooming these gorgeous blue and pink blooms this this just started blooming right now so they're pink but they will start fading to kind of like a purpley blue color um, but I just had to point this out to you guys because I love that this plant blooms this time of year it's absolutely gorgeous Gorgeous. And then I do have an azalea right there. Um, that's starting to bloom. That's a relatively new azalea, uh, so it's not going to get too big, of course, but you can see I have a bud right there, which is very cute. All right, and then coming out this way, I want to show you guys my rose arch. I am so excited about this. So excited. This is my Eden rose arch. I love it. I pruned this guy back and I pruned it way back. I am not, um, like I am not very experienced with roses. I, I just started really getting into roses and now of course I'm like super into roses. So I come out here every single day and I look at my Eden Rose Arch and I see how much it's been growing. And I am so excited because I really think that this Rose Arch is gonna be completely covered this year. I got these roses from heirloomroses.com. It's fantastic. This will be the second year that they're in. So with the first year with heirloomroses.com, they do their own root stock. They don't graft their roses at all. So you have to be really careful and make sure you're not going to burn the roots or anything like that. But now that it's the second year and I know that they've done really well, I feel really confident that they're going, they're just going to take off this year. So I cannot wait to see them start blooming and start to see my Eden roses. Okay, then moving on to my cottage garden bed, which is this whole bed right here. This guy is going to change quite a lot. Really, I should say my whole garden is going to change quite a a lot because I did get my annuals delivered. You guys will see in my back garden tour, which will be out tomorrow, I have a greenhouse full of flowers, which I, oh, I'm so excited to get in the ground. We have one more rainstorm tomorrow and then I am, it's go time and I am going to be planting. All these plants right here that look like corn, <laughs> these are actually alliums. There are a whole bunch of different varieties of alliums and those are the Dr. Seuss kind of flowers. Um, so I'm really excited for those to start blooming especially because last year I planted some alliums some globe master alliums and they didn't do very well for me I got two I think I planted 50 of them and I got two blooms the bulbs were kind of moldy and they just they just weren't good so um, I, I'm just excited to see them this year then one of the big changes that we've had uh, earlier this winter is we had a birch tree here and we had a birch tree in that area behind this fence right there and we had to take it out. And I'm actually really, really happy that we took it out because when the arborist came to chop it down, the tree like spewed water <laughs> as they chopped it down. That tree was completely dead on the inside and it was filled with water. It was pruned incorrectly. Both of them were. Um, and so I 
I feel so much more comfortable that it's out. It's totally disappointing that we lost those trees, but I feel so much more comfortable that it's out. So we ground out the stump and then we have this bucket right here just to kind of keep that spot open. I have been looking for a tree to replace. I was thinking about having a weeping cherry, um, but I can't find one that I want. So it might be something that I just have to be patient and wait for the next year. Um, so yeah, so that's why there's a bucket right there. Over here, I have another limelight hydrangea coming to life, which is really exciting. This limelight hydrangea is probably the happiest one that I have in my garden. Last year, it was just the happiest plant. I think it is just the perfect spot for it because this is east facing, so it does get morning sun. Um, this is a panicle hydrangea, so panicle hydrangeas can handle a little bit more heat and a little bit more intensity than other type of hydrangeas, but still you kind of want to protect them. So the ones that I have in my front yard, they do get a little bit sun scorched. I'm waiting for the root system to develop, um, but this one is just in the absolute best place. And then you can see all around it, I do have perennials starting to pop up, herbaceous perennials. Um, I do have some Veronica over here, and then over here I have some Nepeta coming up. You can kind of see where we ran out of mulch, uh, kind of about right here. So we, the other thing that we've been working on is we ended up taking out all of our black mulch. We had that big, chunky black mulch that I really like the look of. I really love the look of that. That's probably my favorite look in the garden, but it wouldn't break down for us. And so anytime we wanted to add new mulch, we actually had to remove the old mulch to put new mulch on. And it just ended up being like, like a real big pain and so for soil health and for longevity of the of the mulch we decided to replace it with this other type of mulch and i'm really happy about that so we are replacing all the front garden with this type of mulch and then all of the back garden as well and then coming over here i mean can you see this with the shadow this beautiful beautiful specimen this is a peony and this is a peony that my neighbor, actually this neighbor right here, um, her mother passed away, unfortunately, and she had this peony in her garden and they obviously didn't want to get rid of it. And so they asked if I could plant it. And so I planted it in a spot where they can see it every single time they drive home. And it's, um, I'm not for sure what it is, but I'm like 90% positive it's a Bartzella Edo peony. Uh, they did show me a picture of the blooms and there were these big yellow blooms, which looks like a Bartzella to me. It, oh my goodness, it's going to be amazing. I was afraid because whenever you transplant a peony, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of iffy. Um, so I was afraid that it would suffer, but this, this, this thing is happy as a clam right here. So I can't wait for it to start blooming. I cannot wait to show you guys, um, you know, the big yellow blooms. I'm really excited about it. Then right behind me, we do have our fairy garden. This is the garden that I put together with my daughters. I have two daughters, ages seven and nine, well, almost eight. She'll be eight next month. And so this is our spring fairy garden. We try and change it pretty much every season. And so this is, this is kind of like winter spring fairy garden and we'll change it for summer annuals as well. So it's really cute and it's really cute because the neighborhood kids will come out and they'll play with the fairies and play with the little figurines that we have here, uh, which is really, really fun. Okay, so just a quick look at the oak tree garden bed. This is my most natural garden bed that I have. Um, and I did that on purpose because it's all the way around the corner. Uh, this is a native California oak. I think it's a valley oak. And so you have to be really careful when you plant underneath a valley oak because you don't want to plant too many things that, that want too much water. So all of these plants here are approved for planting underneath a valley oak. Uh, you guys can check out my oak tree garden bed planting videos for more information on that. But so far it's looking really good and it's really low maintenance and I think that it's absolutely gorgeous. So I probably will add a little bit to this as time goes on, but right now I'm really happy with how it turned out. All right, the last thing I wanna show you guys for my front garden tour for March is my cut flower garden. So Jason and I added these red be raised beds in January. I absolutely love them. It makes it so much easier to plant in. But if you guys can see, my bulbs are looking fan 
fantastic. So these are more blends from, um, from Costco, from Longfield Gardens Costco. We just tried to cram as many bulbs as we could in this garden bed and I am absolutely loving it. Over here are daffodils. This is a mix called citrus sorbet mixed daffodils. They're starting to come. They need maybe another week or two and then I think they'll be going, you know, they'll be going crazy. Same thing with this ranunculus down here right below the daffodils. Those are the same thing. They need maybe another week or two for them to start blooming. But you can see the tulips are looking absolutely gorgeous. And I do have to show you guys. This is Elegance Watermelon Sweet Pea. My first, oh, there's two. That's so exciting. I love these. It just is the prettiest color. I was inspired this. I saw this on that florette show, Growing Florette. Um, she had sweet peas about this color growing and I just had to have them. I didn't end up getting them from florette. I found them at Johnny's and it's Elegance Watermelon and I'm just so excited to see these start to grow. So my sweet peas, they kind of struggled this winter just because we were so wet. I do fall plant all of my sweet peas. So if you live in a warm climate, you have to fall plant sweet peas. That's something I know I've said that a hundred times, but I didn't know that. I always thought that you could plant them, you know, you could just sow them early and plant them out early in the spring or late winter. And no, if you live where we live, we have to plant them out in the fall. Then over here, I have status. And this is a new status from Johnny Seeds. It's called Forever Happy. I was not aware that status had bracts around their flowers, right? So bracts are just modified petals or modified sepals. Um, and so the bracts of these forever happy status are kind of like a purplish pinkish color. And then the actual flowers from the status are yellow. So it's gonna have that contrast. I'm really excited about it. You can see your status might look like this or, or even some of your seedlings might look like this. If you see purpley leaves right here, on your plants, that is just an indication that they got a little bit too cold. And it's it's just shocking how cold it has been for us this, um, this winter. This one is like got popped up. Um, so when you see purple leaves, it's usually just a little bit too cold. And that's because when it gets really cold, the phosphorus doesn't move very well uh, in the soil. And so just, you know, as it warms up, it'll get a little bit better. Hopefully the, the plant can pull through, um, but it definitely is struggling just because of the temperature. And I'm just, I'm just hoping after this rainstorm, we will start getting some warmer spring weather. So then finally over here in this garden bed, I have three different varieties of my cut flowers. I have uh, afternoon white cosmos right here. They are looking absolutely fantastic, really, really good. In the middle, I have some scabiosa, just a blend of scabiosa, a mix of colors. And then on the far side over by those um, paper whites, I have some ami. So yeah, so everything is looking good. Okay, we just checked and the mama hummingbird is back. So Jason's gonna try and get a shot of her real quick. All right, everyone, that is it for my March front garden tour. Again, bear with us with the filming and the recording. I'm not used to being on camera like this and Jason's not used to filming. Um, so we would appreciate your input on how you like these garden tours filmed, whether me behind the camera just talking or Jason filming me like this. I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm <laughs> getting used to it here. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you're starting to see some signs of spring in your garden as well and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today.